All right, our last break is over. There'll be no more commercials during this broadcast. On Rog and I are here. This is Nerd Rage Gaming. We're doing Legacy. We've got one match left. Matt Brown versus Curran Delahunty. Lands versus Elves. Uh, we got some deck lists ready to go for you. All right, Matt Brown playing Lands. We have watched against him a little bit today, but I believe we're going to watch from his perspective for the first time on the day for this match. All right, what do we think of the Lands matchup versus Elves in current Legacy? Yeah, there's some pretty powerful cards that the Lands ha deck has access to. I think the most important one is going to be uh, something like Tabernacle against the Creature Heavy deck. But mm -hmm. obviously Elves has access to a card like Gaia's Cradle. And then there's that sub-game of maybe you have like Wasteland for the Gaia's Cradle, but then you sandbag the Gaia's Cradle till the turn you need it, so on and so forth. But really, like I'm also a huge fan of seeing like cards like uh, Punishing Fire. It's a little bit clunky, but I think still powerful. And there's still always going to be the access to that like really fast combo with like crop rotation exploration on the whole lake. Right, and and something here, some of the, the new developments in land sex, like we see the full playset here of Valakut Exploration. Strong card, this is not the matchup for that card. I Agree, yeah. yeah. You can get it to play on like turn two if you're on the play, but I feel like the impact of this card is, it, this is not a matchup that's going to be about gr uh, grinding unless both players have like slow starts at which at, at which point then yeah, maybe it'll transition to it and that's when it gets good, but I feel like the very first few turns is going to be about A, not dying, or B, just, you know, absolutely, like, steamrolling your opponent. Mm-hmm. All right, and let's go look and look at the Elves deck. Um, same one we just saw win the Mirror last round. This deck is, you know, this deck is fast. We do have some relevant, tutorable disruption for the Lance deck. We have Reclamation Sage and Scavenging Ooze. So if the uh, initial assault doesn't come together or if it's, you know, blunted by defenses... There is some interaction here. Exactly. And the fact that it's tutorable makes it even more, you know, reliable or better or whatever it is. We saw like in the in the Elves Mirror match, right, that these players were solitary and consistently by turn three and four, which means that the land deck actually does have an opportunity to react to it. So in that situation, then having access to something like scavenging use to maybe like eat a creature, become a three three, not die to punishing fire, or take get take care of like a loam or a punishing fire is gonna be a big game. And Reclamation Sage is is important, but it's not like it's tricky, right? Because you want to stop cards like Sylvan Library, and you want to stop cards like um, uh, what is it, Valakut Exploration? But at the same time, you don't want to like slow yourself down to the point where you know you you can't keep the tempo going. You know, can't you can't keep that frontal right. assault or whatever it is to get the damage through? Yeah. Okay, so the players are ready, and we are in game one. We are on turn one, and Karan Delahanty has four cards on the board already. This is absolutely insane here. Any land off the top here is going to enable a turn to 2020, right? Because you've got four mana and then double crop rotation. Mm hmm. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, there's, I was thinking the more along the lines of the defensive capabilities, but you're right. The uh, offensive strengths are right there also. Yeah. And so, I, I, I love this. Okay. Let's see how things play out. There's a land. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a soul land too, which is even better, right? I mean, like you you weren't really struggling for mana issues, but now you can like crop rotate away something like the well, you even get to like hold up wastelands or something happened, but yeah, I mean crop rotation two lands away, and then you float mana from the wasteland if you're crop rotating that away, and then you can use that mana to pay for the uh stage activation. Okay. I think I I think this means we're going for tabernacle. Oh, Dots. okay. All right, interesting. Maybe I... Okay, this might be like a safer play here so that you just don't die. Can you still win next turn, though? We definitely can't. We don't have a potential win anymore because we don't have both pieces of the combo or access to it. Okay, yeah, so it's going to be a little tricky now, but I can understand this line too, right? I mean, Guy's Cradle, you have answered with the Wasteland, so maybe you just want to take the full control role here and just play a longer game, play a slower, play a little bit safer here. I mean, there's a potential, like we literally saw in the last game, right, that you could die on turn two here, and I think Nettle Sentinel does enable some of those kind of starts here. So uh, this is interesting, though. Wirewood Symbiote now in play. Mm -hmm. So the way this is playing out now, probably going to wasteland that cradle next turn, and then one of the creatures on the board will die. 
Exactly, yeah. So this is this is functionally a removal spell here, which means now for Kern to continue playing this game, they're going to have to have another copy of Gaia's Cradle to make sure that uh, the mana situation isn't bad. But even if you find a second copy of Gaia's Cradle, there's another crop rotation waiting in the wings here. So, I mean, looks like you know, Matt Brown probably has a... Oh, okay, that works, fine. That, yeah, that is... That's... Saves the card. Okay. But we're definitely... Yeah, this is going to be a struggle. Yeah. I mean, Matt Brown doesn't really have a lot to follow up with, but Kern is just going to have to battle through this tabernacle all game long. Right. There's no way to remove it. And until we have something like a Heritage Druid or another guy's Cradle, these creatures are just going to all cost mana. Yeah. Oh, that's a really good point. Heritage Druid is another great way to play around Tabernacle. Uh, I guess this is the board set that I was talking about earlier, which is even if the game doesn't end immediately, well, <laughs> as soon as okay, I say something, it will. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> certainly uh, but, increases the pace of Matt Brown, as now it looks like not only is Tabernacle not going anywhere, but his own humongous one shot um, Ice Demon is uh coming very very quickly yeah and uh, i was gonna say this is the exact board state where you know something like valka exploration would be nice because you can mm -hmm. you know tax your opponent and then start pulling ahead slowly but i mean if you just draw the dark dabs yeah screw that just you go to the go to the face here 20 points of flying indestructible power All right, Korean Ranger comes in, untaps Nettle. This is all fine and dandy for our Kern, but this game will end. Yep. The only drama left is to see whether Matt Brown pays for the Tabernacle cost on his Merit Lage token. Yeah, and I think this is kind of... <laughs> I mean, you don't even have to pay I, for the you, Merit Lage. I, yeah. You don't have to, but that, the, the only drama left is whether he does. Yes, true, true, true. <laughs> and when you put it that way, yeah, I mean, Barrett Lodge is indestructible, so obviously, if you don't pay for it, Tabernacle won't pay, and this is just a styling, you know, just yeah. saying, hey, you know, indestructible here. What you got over there? Oh, nice. A bunch of 1-1s one -ones and a 2-2? Two -two? I'll just fly right over that. Yeah, I mean, my creature doesn't even have flying, but you, you guys don't have flying either? Ground, tree-dwelling elves? Get out of here. You guys don't even have reach. All right, so one game of the finals in the books. If we have the prize slide, let's go ahead and show. I want to remind once again what the players are playing for, and then uh, we'll get this match continued on. So four hundred dollars on the line in this match. First place eight hundred, second place four hundred. Other players third and fourth and top eight already paid out. In addition, the top eight players all are going to receive brand new, not even on the market yet, sleeves from KMC called Hyper Phoenix. So hopefully those are impressive. I'm sure they are, and the players will enjoy those once they get back to playing their paper games. But back to where we're at right now in the finals. Elves, in order to take this down, we're just trying, especially going first, we we have to just goldfish, just a bone-crushing draw right away, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be... I mean, it's obviously easier on the play here because you're going to need a turn yeah. to set up your mana. You're going to get a turn to put in a couple, uh, couple extra creatures. But if... You know, the land side has another really aggressive start like that with multiple crop rotations that are going to be able to tutor up whatever it is that you need. Then it's looking kind of tricky, right? Um, I also think, you know, bringing in cards like Leyland of the Void and, in, in, you know, the post board will be nice to stop things like Life from the Loam, which will then stop like, you know, Wasteland Recursion or Punishing Fire. That's going to be a yeah. huge one, too. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of, you know, nuances going into the post board games that I'm excited to see and just like see how both players try to navigate around it. Also, we could just have another repeat where, you know, yeah. one of the players just has lethal on turn two or something like that. So I wonder I wonder even if for the elf side, do you do you mess around with the ley lines going first or you just try and win and then try and win and grind your game three? I don't know. Yeah. That's that's up to the players. We'll see what the decisions actually are, but certainly Kern is going to need. Well, <laughs> Kern may have had a great hand that game. We never found out because the tabernacle just derailed any momentum that might have happened. And Matt Brown has a crop rotation again. So, Kern, you're going to have to show us. Okay, there's a ley line, mm -hmm. and it's uh, the old border, the old art, the old frame as well, which is ah, like very nice, Chef's kiss. Yeah. 
But on a mulligan with a ley line, that's great and all. But Matt Brown has, for the second game in a row, not drawn any relevant graveyard cards. He's just drawn lands and crop rotations. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that these crop rotations are actually, in terms of a combo perspective, they're a little bit stronger than they look because you have access to Ancient Tomb somewhere in the uh, the 60, Mm -hmm. right? So this could just be like a turn three on your end step, you know, crop rotation, crop rotation, do my thing. Um, Or... I mean, we might see again like crop rotation for Tabernacle come up. So, mm-hmm. so if we're crop rotating for Tabernacle here, the Arbor will pay for itself, and then that will certainly slow things down for Matt, as some library won't even be deployable next turn. But slowing things down for Matt, down for Matt, I mean, it slows things down tremendously for Current. So, I don't, uh, I'm not anywhere close to criticizing this decision. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to be able to find something like uh, a Wasteland 2 to get rid of the Dryad Arbor, then that's going to help as well. Um, this being said, though, the Tabernacle does look a little worse than it did in the last game, just because you have um, the capacity to develop here from the Elves side. So I'm I'm kind of interested to see whether or not, oh yeah, now now things are getting... You know, I was going to say this, this 7 or whatever, this hand that has the Ley Line probably doesn't have that much action in it, but... Looking at the way it's playing out here with the Dryad Arbor and the, the Gaius Cradle, now things are looking insane. And speak of the devil. Yeah, so we had we do have some land destruction available here. So Wasteland and the Ghost Quarter. The Wasteland off the top. The Ghost Quarter would have at least been better for current side. But Wasteland comes, and even now, um, one of these creatures is going to die. I, or I guess one of the creatures can bounce. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll, as we saw last game. Rip, float the mana from the Dryad Arbor, bounce the Dryad Arbor, use the mana to pay for the other two, and uh, we'll have a board, but it's not. it doesn't feel good, right? Because now we're in the same position where we were before, which is without Gaia's Cradle, we're basically just playing one land a turn and one creature a turn, and that is just so not the kind of speed that you want in this kind of game. You want to be impactful. That is not impactful when you are uh, just using... Um, Simple one ones, and I guess you can rinse and repeat this too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Well, I guess to Spear of Resistance actually isn't going to matter too much because Kern doesn't really have any cards left, and all his men is already taxed out of existence. But this is going to be. This is going to take a while. Yeah, for sure. Here, I mean, this is not the situation you want to be in here when you're in Kern's position because you are pushing through two damage a turn here, but that's really just negligible in the grand scheme of things. Here, you really want to find another copy of Guy's Cradle or just like maybe something like a Heritage Druid too, just so that you can start getting these more stuff into play here, or you just start paying for it. Right now, you're just in this weird little lock where you know your Dryad Arbor has to come down every turn, or I guess maybe this indicates that Kern doesn't actually have any extra mana sources in hand, which is even scarier to think about. That's true. You're right. So he probably does have three creatures or spells, but uh, there's just... Okay, well, that can handle the ley line, but uh, somehow that's not actually relevant yet. Mm-hmm. I almost feel like this turn we might just deploy the Sylvan Library and just try to get like a bunch of cool cards into our hand here, or at least like filter our draws. Sure. Yeah, that seems okay. Like Playing the Sphere of Resistance doesn't seem like it would do a whole lot. Uh, I, I guess it prevents really it prevents current from doing anything else, but he already isn't doing anything else. And yeah, you're right. The library comes down. I'm not really sure if we want to pay life with the library. That's a question for for future future Matt. But in this situation, like this seems like one of the better options. You still have access to Force of Vigor if you really want to get rid of the laid line. But I think that crop rotation is looking so good right now that maybe we just sandbag a turn, try to find a green card off the Sylvan Library, and then use that green card to pitch to the Force of Vigor. If we even find a need for it, yeah. Okay, so this... Uh, something different happened. We, did, we didn't bounce the basic before, or the land, other land before, right? So... So that... It makes me wonder, honestly, like what could be going on here. I mean, it's functionally the same thing, you know. You you bounce a land, and your creatures are paid for. But now you can use the forest this turn mm-hmm. to uh, to actually develop your board. You know, if you find like a heritage or something. So that could be the difference here. That might be the reason why we're seeing one play instead of another. Okay, there is a heritage druid. 
Three more reclamation stage. Okay, knock out Sylvan Library. That's fine and all. Oh, it's going to cost so much though. As several, of the, well, okay, the Heritage Druid, the creatures can stay on the board now. I guess. Yeah. So that actually does make a big difference. We'll probably end up bouncing the Dryad Arbor once again, but this is this is a pretty sweet sequence. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, the fact that we can get all this power and toughness into play means that. Uh, well, I guess we're not going to be actually be able to convert it into damage, but this is good because now our Gaius Cradles, our top deck Gaius Cradles, are looking a lot better. Yeah. Also, keeping in mind, we need to figure out how we're going to actually... I mean, I guess it, it goes both ways here. Having the crop rotation in hand here for uh, from the land side means that next turn we're going to be able to put a 2020 into play here. I don't think we have the capacity to do it this turn, but no. you know, being able to threaten that much damage next turn is... Mm -hmm. Good. All right, so now all everything can at least pay for itself. So Kern doesn't have to set himself back every turn just to maintain his resources to pay for his creatures. We're not exactly making a lot of progress, but we're not going backwards anymore. Yeah. And again, these are the, the slower games that I was talking about, right? The lands deck does get to sort of dictate the pace of play here with cards like Tabernacle, with cards like Punishing Fire, with cards like Sphere of Resistance even. And now we're seeing what actually happens. This is the impact, right? The Elves player is going to have to slowly accrue that sort of like, you know, critical mass of mana that it's looking for to pop off. And and during that time, you know, that's when the lands player has to find a way to win the game. And it looks like it's here with the Dark Depths and the Crop Rotation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so crop rotation and two extra mana, or I guess th the tabernacle even could be sacrificed. There's no real reason to do it, but uh, then yeah, there may not be any stopping of the merit lage in the first place once it comes in. Yeah, I don't think there's any like crazy cards in this deck, like run afoul or anything like that. So. Rafael is a pretty sweet card, though. Yeah, this, I actually had the pleasure of playing it like recently, and it was it was nice. Yeah, I have two in my Goblin sideboard. For it's also better against Delver now that they have the Ethereal Vort, whatever it's called. Yep, and Sprite Ball Dragon too. Flyers. Yeah, a lot, a lot of targets. Okay, so here we go. Paying for Tabernacle again, and it's crazy. It's, I mean, it sucks for current. This Tabernacle's come out turn one both games, but there are effectively five of them in Matt's deck, so it's not even, like, that unlikely that it would happen. Mm-hmm, yeah. A lot of triggers on the stack, too, but now, I guess with the Allosaurus Shepherd, that's, like, maybe how you could convert, but now that I'm seeing it, yeah, this is... Uh... So there's... I guess four mana available now. If we go, no, only three. If we go Dried Arbor and then untap with Quirion, reset a land, that would make three mana. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I see it either because unlike Will, so Will Kruger, for example, had a copy of Karakas to go alongside the crop rotation in the main deck. But now you can see the nuances in the deck building here, right? So instead, we've mm -hmm. got the access to the reclamation stage and things like that. So you know, those sort of differences might be what de determines how this specific match plays out. Um, but here, I just expect to see like an end step crop rotation, do the thing, get the stuff. Yeah. You're you're looking pretty good here. Opponents at 18. And by my math, that's less than 20. Yeah. Mine also. So, let's see. It's just a matter of Matt Brown pulling the trigger here, and it looks like he's going to do it. And I don't think he has much to worry about. Okay. Land gets rid of the taiga. Okay. There it is. The combo. Yep. I think the only real decision point there was to choose which land you want to get rid of. And then you just gotta, you know, make sure you click the right buttons here. But there's the 2020 that you once again don't have to pay for, and it's gonna turn sideways. And I think that's gonna be it. Wouldn't it be nice if there was one run of foul in the 75, just so Car Matt Brown had to sweat this out? Yeah, just a little bit of, little bit of like a breathing into the mic with the. <laughs> yeah. But this looks like it's gonna be it. Our number one seed, Matt Brown, all the way through the day. And takes it down. He is our winner. Congratulations to Matt Brown, Kern Delahanty, 
Hopefully you're satisfied with your second place finish. Excellent work. But Matt Brown was a match for nobody today. No one could keep up with him. Uh, yeah, yeah. And just pulverized the field. I'd love to see the player slide here because I want to know yeah. like what Matt's journey was going into this event because the these yeah just look crazy. Yeah, no losses. Uh, Cola's 12 post. Interesting way to start things off. Mm. Yeah. Well, huh. He played against he didn't play against a true control deck, but he played against everything else that we yeah, had. Yeah, just like a lot of different decks here, right? Black Green Depths, Bomberman, Blue Red Delver. Yeah, just completely untouched this entire event here. So basically swept the floor clean. And that I mean that that gets you the first play uh, the first place prize. You can see top right. That's eight hundred oh eight zero zero and you get eight hundred bucks. Perfect. <laughs> that's yeah, that's fantastic. A match made in heaven. So congrats. All right, so uh, hopefully you've all enjoyed your time you spent with us today. Our next month's event is on the schedule. If we have the slide for that, we can pop that up right now. It, uh, we're going back to Modern next month on May 2nd. So same prizes, same stakes as today. Hopefully you'll join us for that, either as a player or as a viewer. So, uh, Anurag, what was uh, what kind of stood out? We had some pretty cool games today, some enjoyable stuff. What uh, What stands out to you? What did you see or what did you watch that uh, you enjoyed i think i one of the and it was really early in the tournament um when we were watching mark eric book play against elves will kruger and there was a position where will kruger had like a progenitus in play and mm. was swinging for 10 points yeah. but mark was gaining life at such a rapid rate between omnath and uro that he actually had a chance of turning the corner yeah. but then will was like all right you know enough of this here's a natural order and Swung in with like a twenty plus power or close to a lot of damage with a progenitus, and it was it was that was a pretty sweet line. Yeah, no, the Els decks did well today, two in the top four, but not a match for Matt Brown and his deck of lands. So congratulations to him one more time as a winner. Uh, thank you for Honor Agdas and Julian Knob joining me today for owner Norman Cohen and chief technologist and judge coordinator Max Khan. I'm Joe Lissette. Thank you for being with us today. We'll see you next.